So, good evening everybody. It is once again uh, a Monday night. It is once again just gone nine o'clock. Thank you so much for being here. I can see plenty of people tuning in on Facebook, lots of people hopefully tuning in on Twitter, maybe some on LinkedIn as well. If you are on Twitter, um, please just drop me a reply. Let me know. I want to know how many people are watching on Twitter. I monitor the comments on Facebook, so I'm going to be um, actually sort of uh, you know chatting to people and answering questions via Facebook tonight. So if you go to facebook.com forward slash act on this TV, um, that's that's how we can have a little uh, a little bit of banter between us. You're perfectly okay to keep me on Twitter, though, in the background if you don't want to get involved um, you know, with any sort of chat that way. And if you are watching or listening on the recording anywhere on the internet or on Spotify or iTunes, drop me a tweet at Act On This TV. Just let me know how you, uh, how you are doing. Got plenty to, um, to cover tonight. Kerry says, I started listening to your podcast. I'm now a convert. Um, I'm loving the content. Thank you, Kerry. We've got plenty to discuss tonight. Yeah. I've got a um, I've got a whole list of things that I wrote down that I want to uh, discuss with you guys tonight. Normally on these Monday night broadcasts, I kind of recap on the atsonthis.tv member only feature from the week before. Atsonthis.tv, if you're not aware of what it is, is a website that I've run now for the past um, uh, nearly 12 years. Actually, it's crazy how how like time has flown by. And um, every week I sit down with a top acting industry guest, a top casting director, a top agent, a top writer, producer, director, someone right at the top of the game in the acting industry in TV. Uh, we don't really cover theatre, but if you are an actor and you want to work more in TV, you want to get involved um, you know, with this community, we host a private Zoom call every single week with one of these top guests. And normally what I would do on these live uh, on these live broadcasts on a Monday night is really sort of recap on the previous weeks. However, last week we had our member only sort of like it's twice yearly at the moment, but I want to make it quarterly, a cocktails and conversation evening where we all jump on Zoom. It's much more casual. We do breakout groups. You get to communicate with each other and like network with each other, meet people you've probably never met before. We did a quiz. We gave out Amazon gift cards. You guys who were on that, you will have received your Amazon gift cards this evening. Check your email if you won one. Um, and, um, and that means we've got nothing to recap on tonight. So I'm going old school how we used to do these by actually just having a chat about various topics that I have written down. And the first thing that I want to cover tonight is something that as actors, we are all <laughs> absolutely completely at home with and probably probably receive on a at least a weekly basis, if not daily, if not multiple times a day. And that is rejection. Give me some comments in the give me a one in the chat in the comments on Facebook if you've had a rejection in the past week or 10 days or even a month um it doesn't have to be necessarily just an audition maybe you're rejected by an agent or you felt like you were rejected by i don't know <laughs> but hopefully you won't take it personally but like a director or a producer or just somebody in the industry right or some situation in the industry um it should never really be taken personally um in 90 percent of cases it is an occupational hazard. It is something that is absolutely part and parcel. I'm seeing all the ones in the chat and people saying today, today, people got rejected today. Um, and um, Chris is more worried about his dating app rejections than industry rejections. So am I, Chris, to be honest with you. Don't don't get me started on Bumble and Tinder. Um, Hinge is much better, though. Hinge is a better quality dating app, Chris. Get yourself on there. Um But yeah, it's something that is absolutely part and parcel of life, of this industry, and yet I still see it and it certainly has, you know, sort of uh, consumed me at points in my career. But I, I got two emails over the weekend um, from two different actors who had been seen for castings and well auditions for shows that they really cared about. You know what you know what it's like. Sometimes you'll get commercial castings, you don't really care about them. I mean that in the nicest possible way, but you're like, these are ten a penny, they come around all the time, and it's basically gonna go off my look. If I look right for that product, I'm probably gonna get the advert. Right? We can kind of let those go. Sometimes drama or comedy castings will come around for great TV shows that you really connect with, you really relate to the character, you think, oh my God, this could have been written for me, this is my life, you think you've done a cracking audition, and then it's still a no thanks. And you're like, shit, what do I have to do like, to just get a role? Like, this could have, you know, I've had it where like sort of things have literally fitted me so like a glove. I've gone, holy shit, if I can't get, <laughs> if I can't get this, I might as well give up. Because this literally might have been written for me. It could be me speaking my own words. And that has genuinely happened on two occasions. Um, three, potentially, if you count, count a casting that I had the week before last. That I've not heard back from yet, but I'm not counting my chickens yet. I think it's, I think it's probably gone, to be honest. Um, so I wrote today on Twitter. I, I might as well just go over to Twitter and show you. I wrote a little thread on Twitter that I thought I'd read out tonight. Because it might just be what someone needs to hear. Um 
because we don't talk about rejection. This is the thing, right? We don't tweet about this shit. We tweet about oh, our best lives, and here I am on set, and here's a picture of a script that I'm that I'm looking at a read through, or here I am, you know, in a in a bar waiting for my scenes on set tomorrow, or you know, whatever it is. And if and if you're not like careful, you would be forgiven by scrolling down Twitter for thinking that everyone else in this industry is auditioning every day, booking jobs every day living the best life, getting paid loads of money and are super happy, right? And I can tell you that that is absolutely not true. You'd be forgiven for thinking that was true if you scroll down Twitter because everybody is just posting the shit that they want other people to see and it really makes them feel better. It gives them that dopamine kick when people like that thing and they're like, oh, you're doing amazing, babe. Oh, that's <laughs> that's so great, so proud of you. Really, deep down, they're thinking, you bastard. Um, but this is the world that we live in, right? So I was like, actually, you know what? Let's. I'm going to, where is it? I've got, I've got a thread here. Well, I'm just going to talk a little bit about... Because I'm guilty of this, by the way. I don't tweet a lot about my rejections. Um, and it's not that you want to tweet about all your rejections and make it all negative. There's, you can go too far the other way. I see a lot of actors who wallow in their own bullshit. It's not about that. It's just about actually portraying a realistic, you know, a realistic sort of view of your life and your career on social media. That's what I, I try to do. Um, but even I'm guilty of this. So I'll read this thread. I put a little thread about rejection. I said, I received two emails from actors over the weekend, both struggling to deal with rejection from auditions that they cared a lot about, right? And we've all had those. Let me know if you have, actually. Have you had? Let me know who here. And, and I mean, really, you've really given a shit. Not like this would be nice to do, but like, oh my God, like I really want this. Let me know again in the, uh, in the chat if, if you've been there and you didn't get it. I certainly have twice. Um, I said, I think social media amplifies the pain of rejection at times, as we don't talk about it, so let's talk, okay? And then I put, if you scroll down Twitter in the echo chamber of the acting industry, because that's what it is, if you're following all the acting accounts and lots of actors and casting directors and agents and that sort of stuff, we all are basically being fed by Twitter's algorithm, this bubble of our industry, where everybody is just basically tweeting about work and it's all very much sort of like, here I am, you know, aren't I great a lot of the time? And again, I'm guilty of that. Um, so we are fed this all the time, right? So I thought you'd be forgiven for thinking everyone is landing auditions, looking, uh, booking jobs and living their best life except you, right? And that's because people only tend to share their wins and not their rejections. I'm just as guilty of that, which is a bit mental really, as I probably face rejection multiple times a day. It's become such a common part of my life, guys. This is why it doesn't hurt as much now. Literally, I'm facing many rejections in lots of different areas, not just, I wish it was all just, you know, auditions. I'm not getting that many auditions. But I do get a lot of rejections every day. And I've sort of developed ways to deal with that that I share in, in, this, um, in this thread. I've put in the last couple of weeks, I've lost out on two roles that I auditioned for in two separate TV shows. Uh, many agents of guests that I want on Acts on this TV have flat out said no. Sometimes I can't get direct access to big actors and people I want on to do, you know, to do sessions and acts on this.tv with us. So I have to go through agents. And I tell you what, like the amount of agents who literally you go, you haven't even asked them. You just message me back with this semi-polite message that's a copy and paste that basically goes, do one, dickhead, got no time for you. And um, so that happens a lot. I said, I've recorded multiple voiceover auditions, which have led to nothing. That's a, a really regular occurrence. Um, you know, it's great to be recording those, but they don't always lead to work. With every email I send out, this is what, you know, you guys should know as well. You know, every email I send out to the Acts on This TV email list, there's now, admittedly, there's thousands of actors on that list. And you all, if you're here, probably jumped on that list. And some of you might have actually got access to this broadcast tonight via the email that I sent out. I'll get at least a dozen actors um, unsubscribing from my email list. I mean, that's just absolute standard. They're, they're just going, no, stop sending me this shit. Get out of my life. <laughs> right? So that's a rejection. I put there, don't even get me started on Bumble and Tinder. Ultimately, we, we all face rejection, right? It's not just as actors either. You think uh, you might think that casting directors and directors have it easy. They don't either. And we hear this every week on our broadcast, right? I guarantee the same casting directors that you look up to so much have recently lost out on jobs that they were dying to cast because they have to audition effectively for their kind of jobs as well. Again, no one shows that though. Directors who would give everything, uh, who you would give anything to work with, will have missed out on working with people that they would give anything to work with too. So how can we deal with all of this rejection in a healthy way? And I put, for me, it's about perspective and sowing the seeds of opportunity every day, right? And I put one, this is the perspective part. And this is what we really need to focus on. 
and it is hard sometimes but ultimately as long as i am healthy my family are healthy and my friends are healthy the rest really doesn't matter and you might have had times in your life where you've had a health scare where you've gone holy shit why was I not cartwheeling down the street yesterday when I didn't have this health scare? Why was I worrying about that nonsense? Right, I've definitely been there. So um, I said that doesn't, say, you know, it's not saying that rejection won't sting, but here's how to make it sting way less. Two, this is the big part. Look for opportunity on a daily basis. Think of it as spinning plates and juggling balls. Most people allow fear and uncertainty to stop them from spinning more than a plate or two at a time. They won't juggle more than a couple of balls because they are scared of dropping them, right? And that means when they do smash a plate or they drop a ball because they've only going with like two at a time, they are devastated because like, oh my God, I've got nothing left now, nothing, you know, to sort of like hold on to hope-wise, right? Let's say though, you could develop the systems and courage to spin 10 plates at a time. Don't get things twisted. I'm not saying juggle 10 massive projects at a time, but rather than reaching out to just one casting director, you know, send an email to a casting director. Maybe you've done one this week. It's only Monday. They'll let you off. Why not reach out to six? Then connect with four directors on Twitter, right? That way, when five plates come crashing down, you've still got five spinning. Whilst they're spinning, why not start writing that short script that's been in your head for ages? That's another ball up in the air, right? Get involved with a friend's project. That's another. You might end up with 32 plates spinning and 16 balls up in the air. 36 of them might fall, but that still leaves you with 12 opportunities still brewing, which is still six times as many as most actors have out there because they'll only deal with one or two things at a time, right? It means that rejection becomes a fleeting blow as you've always got the chance of one of your other opportunities paying off big. Like I said, it doesn't mean working yourself into the ground and, you know, totally overwhelming yourself or doing things badly because you never really, you know, stick to one thing. It's just about taking um, small daily actions and sowing multiple seeds each, uh, seeds each week knowing that some things will pay off while others won't. Most actors, unfortunately, play small, guarding their one plate or ball as if their life depends on it, and that leaves them massively vulnerable. So have a look at how many plates you're spinning right now, how many balls you're juggling, and could you add just one more like today? And you've still got time tonight. It's only quarter past nine. Or if you listen on the replay, you might have all day, right? I put there, leave me a comment letting me know and share one recent rejection plus what it taught you because there are no failures really. As long as you're learning, you're succeeding. So it's about what that, that rejection taught you. Rejection can often be redirection into you know something better. Uh, but I put if you're not facing rejection, you're not playing big enough. Have a wonderful day. And then I've got a picture there that says what you choose to focus on will grow. And there's like four plant pots. For those on the audio experience, you won't see this, but there's four, pa four I can't speak, four plant pots at the top of this picture labeled self-doubt, negativity, worry, and rejection. And they're all dead um, because we don't want to focus on those. There's one at the bottom there that's thriving says positivity on it. It's got a watering can labeled with act on this because that's what we're all about. It says what you choose to focus on will grow. So, what you choose to focus on this week will grow. And um, and if you can, you know, if you can end up sort of just just um, accommodating one extra plate that's spinning, one extra ball that you're juggling up in the air, uh, that might be one email. It might be one, you know, one connection you make on social media. It might be watching a feature on actsonthis.tv with a casting director that you want to get in front of or something like that. If you can just accommodate one more, um, it could, you know, it, it could be the unlock. That could be the thing that leads to the thing that leads to the thing that gets you the job that you want. Um, so let us know. Indra's had a dating rejection. Indra, don't worry about it, man. <laughs> Par for the course. <laughs> um, but let's have a look. Um, yeah, I mean, does, does that resonate with people in terms of maybe, and if you're honest with yourself, you might have been playing it safe because you are just shit scared of getting these no's. But I promise you, when you have 16 things on the go at once. And it's not like I say, they're not big projects. It's not like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I've got this to do and that to do and that to do. It's just going, right, I've got 10 minutes. Who can I link in with on LinkedIn? Who can I send a tweet to? Who can I reconnect with who I've worked with on, on a project six months ago and I haven't spoke to since? Who can I send that text to that says, hey, you know, just, you know, thinking about you, just thought I'd check in. Um, you know, it was, it, it was wicked working on such and such a thing. Um, you know, let me know if I can help you with anything else. Um, it's those things that you sow and they're out there that can sprout and grow at any time. And if you can find yourself literally just 10 minutes each day to do that one thing, you know, half of those things that are out there can come crashing down or lead to nothing. But, you know, a lot of them will come back and lead to, um, you know, lead to opportunities. So that rejection won't hurt 
because you're like, well, okay then. You know, I, I missed out on this job. Bill, I'm talking about Bill. Bill's on this job. Bill, Bill's on this drama who's here now uh, up in Glasgow, a fantastic drama. I had a really good audition for it, really interesting part. Um, I would have loved to do that job. Very challenging role for me, that. It would have been like really nice opportunity to prove myself. Um, I couldn't have done any more. I literally could not have done more with the time that I had in that audition. Um, if they needed more than that or they needed something different, I am not the person for that job. Like, you know, and I can feel at peace, you know, with that. But the another reason why it doesn't hurt is because I still got like 20 things on the go. It's like, okay, that didn't pay off, but it's all right, you know. One, that's another casting director who's seen me. Two, hopefully, you know, I've done a good job for the director. Um, those are, are seeds that are now sown that can spring up at any time in the future. You know, six months might go by and then the casting director brings me in for something else. It's perfect for me and I get it. Um, but the more things you've got to go to once you leave that audition and you've been rejected, <laughs> um, it doesn't hurt. It, it's just like a, you know, a fleeting sort of blow. Um, so you've got to... Um, You've got to just, yeah, cultivate your own opportunity on a, on a daily basis. So that's just what I wanted to talk about. First of all, little bit of rejection. It's redirection. It's not always a bad thing. And you know what? Sometimes, you know, I said before, you don't take rejection personally. I think sometimes there is merit in taking it personally. Only like in maybe one out of 10 occasions. I have definitely been to auditions and I have left that job and, and I have been like, you didn't deserve that, Ross. Like you, you, you did the work. Don't be unkind to yourself. You did the work. You did the prep, but for whatever reason, like something mucked up in there. Maybe you didn't give yourself. I know exactly what it was on one occasion. I didn't give myself enough time. I'd been to another job. I ran to that audition. Literally had to run, and it was my own fault. I wasn't confident enough, and I should have been to um, to say, listen, can I just have like ten minutes just to you could maybe someone go in before me, and because I've just I'm literally my heart is racing, not because I'm because <laughs> I'm in a state, because I've literally run, and I'm not in a in a cool calm state of mind to do this. I was like running like, yeah, you ready? Yeah, yeah, I'll come in, and I walked out going, nah, that that is my fault. I can take that personally. That rejection was entirely my fault um, because I should have been able to book that. Um, so sometimes they're just lessons to be learned. Like I say, there's no failures. If you're learning, you are succeeding. Um, and 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 really, it's, not, it's just an outcome in it. You shouldn't even really label it a failure. It's probably a, a negative word to use. It's just an outcome. Sometimes the outcomes are what you want. Sometimes the outcomes are, are what you don't want. But that's the first thing I wanted to cover tonight. Hopefully, that will um, resonate with a few people. And if you've had rejection this week, um, you'll realize that you're absolutely not on your own. You know, I think some people... Like, look at people who have a lot going on on social media. I put a load of stuff out, and, and I'm, I am guilty to a certain degree. Um, I don't put, like, bullshit photographs out on Instagram that are filtered to hell, that are completely fake. Um, but I have a lot of stuff to tweet about that's positive, because obviously I run this community, and I'm doing a lot of stuff all the time. And I think sometimes people will be like, oh, he's just got it got it easy. Honestly, get punched in the face on a daily basis. <laughs> like not physically but by the industry by agents by people by you know people that i want to get on ads on this.tv honestly like it's just rejection is just a necessity within this industry like and you'll get to a point where hopefully you've got so many balls in the air plates spinning that you know three three quarters of them 75 percent of them can come crashing down um and you're still all right because you've still got plenty on the go so that's sort of like the uh the goal I'm missing loads of chat, I'm afraid. I can see there's loads of stuff going down in the chat on Facebook, so apologies, but I only see like five comments at a, uh, at a time at the moment. Next thing that I wanted to cover, um, I I put another tweet out this morning um, to a guy who I respect massively, who's had a big impact in my life. Uh, I've only met him a couple of times, but um, you you might listen to my podcasts and uh, the broadcast that I do on Um Obviously, I listen to other people's podcasts. I don't, you know... <laughs> As egotistical, egotistical as I am, I don't just put my own podcasts on and listen to those. Um, so I tweeted a guy called Stephen Bartlett this morning um, just to say thank you for, for a podcast that he put out this morning. Um, he had a great guest on, a, a guy who was talking all about mindset um, and ultimately just success, a lot of you know success from a scientific kind of background as well and psychology. I, I find that stuff really, really interesting. Um, I believe that mindset really is the differentiator between those who succeed and those who don't in 90% of cases. Um, a lot of people will have great plans for things um, they might share that plan with somebody who then 
puts doubt in their mind because maybe they've been hurt by life or they tried to achieve something they didn't do it they think they're warning you of the you know and stopping you going through the pain that they might have gone through or in in some cases they might not want you to do it because it makes them feel inadequate so that can alter your mindset and you don't do the thing and so i just sent a tweet to this guy this morning and then i can't remember who it was a member of the community um said oh thanks ever so much for introducing me to this podcast um could you do a session where you share other podcasts that you listen to with us um, so you can benefit from those as well? So I'm like, yeah, totally. Why don't we do that tonight? Um, so I've chosen three people who I have followed online for many years um, who have had a massive impact on my mindset, on building apps on this.tv and just life in general. Um, so I'm going to play some videos out of these people to introduce you to them. I'll tell you what their podcasts are. You can go and subscribe to them on iTunes or Spotify. It's all completely free. Um, but we will start off with Stephen Bartlett, um, an incredible guy who um, set up a, you might have heard me talk about it before, he set up a social media agency here in Manchester not that long ago, like, I don't know, seven years ago, something like that. It's called Social Chain. Um, and he grew this business from nothing um, into a £200 million business. So quite a bit bigger than that's on this. But we're, but we're aiming for that, yeah. <laughs> I'll let you know when we get to one million. Um, but he's just an incredible guy. He's only like 27, 28 now, something like that. Um, I think he's 28, maybe. Um, Steve, massive apologies if I've got that completely wrong. Um, but he, he does a podcast called The Diary of a CEO. And what he does is he will get... He's, he obviously was a CEO. Now he's invested in lots of different companies. He's actually going to be a new dragon on Dragon's Den. Uh, for anyone here who's entrepreneurial and wants to, um, you know, sort of like have a side hustle, he's a great guy to follow. But he gets guests on his podcast every week and they talk a lot about just life, mindset, success, people from the arts and entertainment, people from science, people from all walks of life. He had like Liam Payne on from One Direction last week. This morning he had a, um, I said, this high performance mindset guy on um, who was incredible. Um, but he's someone who I think you really should follow on social media and you should um, you should subscribe to that podcast diary of a CEO even if you are not a CEO well you are because you're a CEO of your own acting career and your own acting business and um, so I've got a six minute video it's only six minutes we've got plenty of time to play these out this uh, this evening this is just a, a clip of Steve talking one-to-one -one on camera about quitting about giving up because Steve built this company to a 200 million pound level and then went, right, this company now cannot take me in the direction that I want to go in, in in my life, so I am quitting. Not quitting as I'm a loser, it's too hard, I can't do it. Um, actually sort of taking control of his life and his career and, um, and really sort of having the courage and the guts to go, this is no longer serving me, I'm going to go in a different direction. And I think this really applies. Why I want to play this out, it applies to many areas of our career as actors, right? It might be that you are with an agent who you have been with for two years too long and you're like I'm so afraid of having no agent even though I know that I'm in this this relationship that in some cases when I get emails from some actors I'm like this this relationship with your agent is toxic they're holding you back some agents are actively and I don't know why this is some agents right now are actively disencouraging their clients to reach out to casting directors themselves what the biggest load of horse shit I've ever heard in my life. We get the biggest casting directors in TV who cast the biggest shows in some in some cases the world on actsonthis.tv for members every single week, right? They all encourage actors, whether you are on Spotlight or not, whether you've been to drama school or not, whatever, you know, they all encourage you to reach out to them because they say, as Andy Morgan said, it always resonates with me, he said, we are only as good as the actors that we know. And sometimes I get emails from actors and they're like, oh, my agent's put a load of doubt in my head and they've told me that, you know, I shouldn't be reaching out to casting directors and that it's not allowed. I'm like, your agent knows nothing. Like, it just shows. Like, just because they call themselves agents, right, doesn't mean they're good, right? That This is another thing in our industry. Just because someone calls themselves a casting director, there's no, it's not regulated at all. I could set up as a casting director tomorrow. I could set up as an agent tomorrow, right? You need to know who is good and who isn't. And just because actors are generally the ones who are the most sort of... Uh, crippled by their limiting beliefs around what they can and can't succeed at there are there are people who are set up as agents who are just as just as flawed who are just as afraid as casting directors of casting directors as you are or, or as directors as you are and they don't want any of their clients doing anything that are like oh god what if they get it wrong it's going to come back on me 
all just scared, 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 running their businesses through fear. What a terrible place to, to run a business from. So um, sometimes it takes courage as that from from an actor to go, I'm going to quit. This is no longer serving me or taking me in the direction that I want to go. Um, other times, um, there could just be many, many other things in your life or in your career where you're actually like, you know what? I should quit this. I should fail fast. And I should, you know, redirect to something else. So this is a clip from Steve talking about that. It gets really good after the first couple of minutes when he starts talking about in order for a monkey to swing through the trees because Steve went and wrote a book and he did it in like in, in the jungle where he was like chilled out. He went to some far flung place and just on his own in a jungle, you know, and he said he saw the monkeys flying through the trees. And in order for it to do that, in order for it to swing to one branch, it had to let go of the other. So you might be holding on to a branch now for dear life that's stopping you from swinging to that next tree and making a journey. So this is Steve Bartlett talking about quitting. Maybe it'll resonate with you and you might go, you know what? This is the week where something in my life or my career changes. I just quit my job. I was the CEO and founder of Social Chain, as a lot of you will know. And Social Chain is one of the most remarkable, exciting, fast growing social media companies in the world. I genuinely believe that. There's no company, in my opinion, better at social media and doing what Social Chain does than Social Chain. And I'm gone now, so I can be impartial about that. I started the company at 21 years old from a desk in Manchester. The company is now a huge global you know, beast with 700 team members, hundreds of millions in annual yearly revenue. It's listed on the stock exchange and it's doing better than it's ever done before. That company made me everything I am. It made me a millionaire. It really positively challenged me for seven years of my life. It made me better. It made me cry, laugh, scare, dream. It made me happy. And then I quit. And when I told the world I had quit, people understandably just couldn't understand. Why would you leave a company that's doing better than it's ever done before, has a brighter future than it's ever had before? You must have been kicked out, they presumed. You must have some grand plan, they hypothesized. You must be stupid, they asserted. Nope. My relationship with the board and the company is better than it's ever been. It's great. I have no grand plan. Maybe I'm stupid. Here's the thing. At 16 years old, I stopped going to school because I didn't think school would give me what I needed it to in order for me to become who I wanted to become. And ultimately, I was kicked out of school near the end. At 18, I dropped out of university after just one lecture with absolutely no plan. At 20, I left my first startup completely out of the blue, again, with absolutely no plan. And now at 27, I left my successful global business, my job, my salary, and everything that comes with it with absolutely no plan. Madness, right? So much is written in personal development books and the internet about the courage it takes to start a new job, to start a new relationship, to start a new business, or to start a new passion. Not enough is written about the equally important, equally courageous, equally confounding thing you usually or nearly always have to do before you start something new, which is quitting the last thing. I've just spent the last month out in the Costa Rican jungle with monkeys, literally living with monkeys, writing my book. And the characteristics required to quit are somewhat analogous to the way that I saw those monkeys swinging through the jungle every single morning. You can't grab hold of your next branch until you have the conviction required to let go of your last. Those horseshit, yet very popular cliches that tell you quitting is for losers or that you must never give up as you see it plastered all over Instagram don't help anyone. They trap you in a toxic narrative that quitting is a weakness, an easy way out. Or worse yet, that quitting is failure. Quitting like starting is a real skill. And it will turn out in all of your lives, as it's turned out in mine, that quitting is for winners. A large part of the reason I've been successful, the reason I'm the happiest person I honestly know, and the reason I've avoided overstaying my welcome in toxic, soul-destroying relationships and situations is because I have a solid, mental, almost subconscious framework for quitting. If you have a quitting framework of your own, you, like me, can quit in peace without the anxiety, the worry, or wasting years of your life consumed in wishful thinking that things might change when you know they won't. I don't quit because things are hard. In fact, the difficulty of a challenge often correlates to the rewards on offer. So difficulty for me in my life has been a sign that I should keep going, that I'm in a growth moment, that I'm going in the right direction. And so I live in search of increasingly harder challenges. 
I often say that my professional mission is to fill my life with excruciatingly hard, but definitely worthwhile challenges. Challenges I know are worth the sacrifice. And I tend to believe that if you do hard things now, you'll have an easy life later. If you do easy things now, conversely, you'll have a hard life later. And so I've lived my life, as you can probably tell, if you look at the, the way that I've made my decisions, seeking chaos. It turns out that's my happiness and I avoid stability. It turns out that's my chaos, but I do quit because things suck. And at the point that a situation sucks for me, for whatever reason, right? And many situations start well and then turn out sucking. And I no longer believe that I can stop the situation sucking or because the effort required to stop the situation sucking is no longer worth the rewards I believe that are on offer, then I quit. And that is the crux of my quitting framework. For me, I'm totally, deeply in love with this company. It gave me all my friends, pretty much all my friends. But for what I wanted out of my life at this moment, for what I intrinsically, deeply want from my life, to feel the way that I need to feel every single day, I felt like the direction I want to go in wasn't the same direction that Social Chain could take me in. I didn't think Social Chain could give me it. And that sucked. And so I quit. And I quit with a few reminiscent, solitary tears. I sat at my laptop that day and cried because as I looked back over the last six, seven years, right back to the days where I was shoplifting Chicago Town pizzas to feed myself, where I was at war with my mother because I dropped out of university and I was struggling to keep a roof over my head, I was grateful. I was so grateful for the people that had believed in me, for the memories I have and for the lessons I've learned and the journey to every corner, stage and boardroom in the world that this business has taken me. As a famous hip hop philosopher once said, it was all a dream. Despite the tears and what they might make you believe about that moment, I quit with total faith that this moment was the right moment, the right moment for me to move on. I quit in total peace. And I quit guided by the clear direction of my own internal voice, a voice that has served me well my whole life when I've allowed it to speak, uninfluenced by what society or my mum or any other external force expects of me without the need for a plan. And here we are, happy, peaceful, and unemployed. Boom. So, Diary of a CEO, a podcast I listen to every single week. Um, and I can see people in the comments are uh, are like saying how, how much they like what Steve was saying there. Um, and it resonates as well. There was two things that you said there, because this isn't to be confused with like, you know, all right, so the acting industry is hard and quitting acting. It's not that unless, you know what, unless like what Steve said there, I wrote it down. The effort to get what you want is no longer worth the reward. Then it's okay to quit. But if the reward is still worth the effort, it just might mean quitting this thing that you are doing that is not getting you to this place, if that makes sense. So it's not about going, oh, well, that's it, you know, I'm, I'm just going to quit acting. No, there, there will be things within the acting industry. Maybe the acting class you've been to for the last four years that's now turned into a social club and you don't ever feel like there's any of those growth moments there because I've been there as well, I'll tell you that. It's almost like we become indoctrinated or addicted to a certain class or a certain group of people because it's fun and what happens normally i'll tell you in my own circumstances and let me know if, if this resonates with you you go to a new acting class as a group of people you have never met before and you feel you have something to prove you have something you've got to make your mark i go into a class and i'm like right i need to show these people that i'm good right and that i'm you know to be reckoned with in a way <laughs> Um, and then what happens is, you know, you all end up almost kind of like a hierarchy within the group of like who you know are the great ones and the ones who are coming up and the ones who are improving and getting better. And then you all become mates. Um, and then you let your foot off the pedal because you're like, oh, you know, we all kind of know each other now. There's nothing left to kind of prove or show. Um, it's almost like we've created our, our tribe and everyone's got their role within it. Um, and then you stay there for five years and you go, actually, you know what? I've not really challenged myself in uh, in ages. Um, Dougal, good evening. I can see you in the, in the comments there, mate. Um, so it might be quitting that. Like I say, it might be quitting the agent. It might just be quitting something that is going on in your career that is no longer serving you where the effort you are putting in on a weekly basis is no longer worth the reward. Um, so that's the first guy, Stephen Bartlett. Um, 
drop him a tweet at Stephen at Steve, it's just at Stephen on Instagram on Twitter um, it's something similar let me just find it might just be at Stephen Bartlett to be honest let's have a look where is he uh, it'd help if it's on the right account wouldn't it I'm just going to go on my profile uh so it's just at Steve Bartlett SC. That stands for social chain. At Steve Bartlett SC. Drop him a tweet. Let him know. I uh, said you, sus- you should subscribe um, and do it. Yeah, go subscribe to his podcast. Um, quitting is for winners, says Kelly. No, it really is. There's some things in your life where you're like, this is just better to just quit and get out of this. Right. Second person up that I am going to share with you is someone I've played out quite a few times on these broadcasts, but not for a long time. You will have heard of this guy, I'm sure. Um, Huge social media presence everywhere. Gary Vaynerchuk, or Gary V, um, as people know him as. Let me know in the chat if you are aware of Gary V. Gary V-E-E is how you spell his username. This guy is, again, a just an incredible businessman. Um, he's created multiple hundred million dollar plus companies uh one company he sold last year sold for nine figures i think um but a lot of the stuff but yes these might be entrepreneurs steve's an entrepreneur gary's an entrepreneur the lessons that these guys go through and that they impart with other people are so applicable to our industry and just life in general okay they really really are this is why I set up Acts on this.tv is really the, the only place that's still to this day that really teaches the business side of show business, of this industry, of getting into TV. You know, not just the creative side. You know, I'll never teach you how to act. It's not my job. I'm not interested in it whatsoever. Turning that talent ultimately into paid work and you earning a living out of it is what I'm all about and what Acts on this.tv is all about. Um, because this is not taught anywhere. It's not taught at drama school. It's not taught in any books. There's no, you know, there's just, it's not taught in any acting classes. Um, it was the missing piece of the jigsaw for me, you know, that turned me into someone who I, you know, I could act. I went to a great drama school. I was, you know, I spent a ton of money there and I was still working for minimum wage in a toy shop. It's like, what the fuck's going on? Like, you know, this is not how it should be. All my friends who had gone and done real degrees um, were earning, you know, we're in graduate jobs getting 30 grand a year. I was working for £5.75 an hour in the Trafford Centre going, what the hell is happening? And it's because I didn't understand anything about the business side of this business. Things are very, very different now. Um, and they are for lots of members of the community. I noticed um, Eloise, I don't know if you're here tonight, just booked her first TV job today on a fantastic BBC serial drama that we just happened to be speaking with the casting director of the week before last. Um, coincidence? I think not, because we get the best guests on. But Gary V, let me play you out a clip from Gary V. This is Gary V. Um, talking, do you know what? He's talking about something that, that again, yeah, applies to sort of his world, but applies to our world massively. And that is basically people saying they want something. So they really want to succeed in the acting industry. They really want to succeed at this. And actually, they're, they're, what's coming out of their mouth is nowhere near as congruent. It's just not, it, not even anywhere near. It's not congruent at all with the actions they are taking. So I will see people... People will, 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 you know, find out about Acts on this.tv, which is cheap as chips, guys. Six quid a week. I mean, I, I, I give you seven masterclasses with the biggest names in the business, far bigger than what a lot of other, you know, companies are bringing you. I give you seven a month for less than what most people are charging for one because I just want to make this as accessible as possible. And yet I still get people who are like, oh, yeah, I'd like to get involved, but don't have six quid a week. And then I, what I do, this is dead honest, I go and look on the social media. And I see on the social media, even in lockdown, even now, when things aren't really even open, I see them wasting money on bullshit. This is a real example. Someone was like, oh, yeah, I'd love to get involved in that uh, that Zoom class you've got next week with, I can't remember what casting director it was. It might have been Daniel Edwards, who was casting Line of Duty at the time. Um, but, you know, I just um, just just don't have, have, have the six quid at the moment. And I was like, okay, yeah, no problem. I and mean, I'll never discount the membership. It just isn't isn't a thing. It's just fair for everybody. I never, you know, I make it so cheap that I can never discount it. But it also just undermines anyone who's already got a membership if I discount anything for anybody, regardless, unfortunately, of what they claim, the, the, the financial position they are in. It's still as cheap as I can make it. I went and had a look on his Twitter. He'd proudly posted. Honestly, I'm not even making this up. You'll think I'm making this up. He proudly posted that same day that his new Jamie Oliver potato masher better be worth the 15 quid that he just spent on it at John Lewis. That I'm not even lying. I can't even make that shit up. 
but that is the truth. And I thought, ah, okay. So what's coming out your mouth that you want to succeed and you want to, you know, you want to be seen for these kind of shows like Line of Duty. And I'm bringing the casting director on tonight to talk about how you get in in front of him for that show. You're telling me that's what you want, but actually, and you plead you plead in poverty where you've just gone and spent nearly three times as much as what it would cost you to get involved in that on a fucking potato masher. Not even joking. And um, so this is Gary talking a little bit about sacrificing shit for what you what you actually want you know sometimes it shouldn't be easy what you're asking for in an acting career is a one percent life basically you know you're asking to not only do a job that you love but you want to be paid very well for it you want all the trappings that come with that it should not be easy and this is gary's take on that it's only a short video this is dreams we're talking about we're talking about dreams So many people are asking me like, how, how do I live my dream, Gary? And you know, I don't have time. I have mortgages and bills and responsibilities in my job. I don't have time for my side hustle, my Twitch channel, my Instagram account, my Shopify store selling hoodies. And I keep getting to this new place, which is talk to me about your bills. Like, why'd you buy an apartment that stretches you? Why is your car so fancy? Like, why do you need the new Gucci every time? Like, why are you, why are you going out Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night? Like, why are you going to Coachella? Like, why, why are you going to Avengers opening night and buying the biggest piece of popcorn and candy? Like, the answer to all of your questions is not how much money you make or how much time you have, it's what you're spending your money on. Why do you want the newest pair of Yeezys? Why? Why? You're not entitled to your dream. You're not entitled. Nobody's entitled to be a, an amazing dancer. Nobody that, that tours the world and gets to dance and open for Beyonce and make 580 a year and fucking live it and go to fucking, you know, you know <laughs> Monaco on the fucking weekends. Like, it's not how it works. Everybody starts at zero. Some people start at different places. But anybody who does it for themselves has to sacrifice. Like, yes, like, move. Like, my city's expensive, move. Like, my car payments are high. Sell your car and buy a piece of shit car. Take the bus. This is dreams we're talking about. We're talking about dreams. We're talking about, like, I want to be a professional gamer. We're talking about, I want to get paid $200,000 to give a speech. We're talking about shit that isn't normal. Dreams require sacrifices. People don't want to sacrifice. Like for some reason, DNA, parenting, circumstance, I'm on the extreme end of everything's my fault. Nobody owes me shit. I shouldn't get anything unless I bleed for it. It's one big framework, DRock, of like, of self-esteem, lack of self-esteem, slash insecurity, entitlement, or accountability, it's these huge things. I'm not judging people other than I'm asking people and I'm bringing up a different debate that isn't being talked about a lot, which is why do you want to go to Coachella? That's what I'm interested in. Boom, bit of Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, yeah, it's just an important message. It's like, why? You know, he said at the end, end there. I mean, obviously, Coachella's sort of like the American version of um, of our like Glasto, in it, our Glastonbury, that kind of thing. It's like a lot of people like get their they have so low self esteem that they end up having to buy the extrinsic nonsense that makes them feel good in the moment. They ultimately, this is this sums it up. They end up buying things that they don't need with money they don't have to impress people they don't like. <laughs> It's true, isn't it, though? They buy things that they don't need with money that they don't have to impress people that they don't even like. As opposed to going, you know what, I'm going to sacrifice that. I'm going to knuckle down. I'm going to work now um, in a way. That's what Steve said, you know, work now, work hard now um, so that life later on is far easier. Um, I just thought it was an interesting take. But Gary's amazing. Gary does just an awful lot um of oh, so much content online just just search for gary v with two e's literally anywhere um is a guy who i have in my ears um basically every single um every single morning um 
I'm constantly listening to stuff. That's another thing. Like, you know, sometimes people say, oh, I can't get involved in ads on this because I can't make the sessions live. You know, you don't have to. Like, I'm always, and I would recommend this to everybody, um, I'm always with earphones in or if I'm at my desk, I'm playing some audio. Sometimes there'll be music if I just want to chill, but a lot of the time, five hours a day at least, you know, there'll be stuff on that I'm learning from and sort of, you know, growing through. Um, so in terms of acts on this, if you're struggling to keep up with the acts on this content, we're only doing one session a week. You might be like, oh, I, you know, I don't have the time for it right now. Just put a pair of headphones in for 90 minutes a week. That is it. That is how you will stay on top of everything that is going on in the acting industry literally right now. If you want to stay at the forefront and know what is possible for you as an actor in this industry, 90 minutes a week, that's it. I'm sure people have wasted 90 minutes on Netflix this week watching something that has not contributed one bit to their life bar escapism for 90 minutes. Um, so, um, so yeah, again, just think about like, I think it's a great message. Think about what you... Uh, you know, what, what you're spending money on. Alex says, honestly, he's so motivational. He's a good guy, isn't he? Good, good guy. In fact, tonight, you know what? All I'll do I'll do another I'll, I might do another one of these with um I've just noticed I've got three three men this evening. The next guy's a guy as well. Although this next guy gets a lot of um guests on his podcast. There's lots of women involved in that. But there's also it's not just exclusively um guys. There's a lot of incredible women out there who would who, who are just as motivational as well. Look at people like Marie Folio, um uh, oh God! Who's the the uh, five second the five second rule? Oh God! What what's the name? Someone Google the five second rule. Mel Robbins. Mel Robbins um, is absolutely fantastic. She's brilliant. Um, Amy Porterfield. I mean, there's there's loads of uh, loads of, of of females that I could uh, I could give you guys as well. Um, but the next guy, let's have a look if I've got him lined up. Yes, next guy. I'm, again, I'm sure. You imagine if you got him as a guest on Acts on This. I'd love to get Gary Vee as a guest on Acts on This. Or, well, Steve, you know what? Steve Bartlett once said he would do a podcast with me, um, but then he moved to America and we never did it. And now he's back in the UK. I mean, he's a lot, he's a lot more well known than he is than he was back then. But I, I spotted something in him. I knew he was going to be a, a, a great success. So maybe I don't know. Maybe if I if I resent in the email where he agreed to do it, maybe you would do it. Um, but I'd love Gary Vee on as well. And I'd love this guy on as well. This guy's called Lewis Howes. He has a podcast called The School of Greatness. Lewis Howes, L-E-W-I-S-H-O-W-E-S, -E -E Lewis Howes. Um, and this guy does a weekly podcast similar to what I do, but you know, mine's exclusively with the people in the acting industry. Lewis sits down with people just who are successful in life, in all walks of life, and just has really like intimate, in-depth conversations with them. Um, and you just get to hear some incredible insight um, it's a brilliant way listening to stuff like this honestly and just all of this stuff it's just a brilliant way to take in the knowledge of decades worth of experience from people for free it's like that's why I love books and autobiographies um, I listen to audio books more than reading now but you know when somebody does an autobiography who's had a lot of success or it's just had an incredible experience. It might have taken 40 years to, to build that. You get to take it in in four hours, six hours, something like that. It's such an incredible gift. But um, Lewis Howes is fantastic. This is a clip of him. Um, this actually, this actually, you don't even think you see Lewis. You might see Lewis, but you don't hear Lewis in this. I just thought this was a, a, a really interesting mashup uh, from an interview that he uh, he did recently. Um, that's just talking about, again, everything I preach about, taking control of your life, your career, not getting overwhelmed, realizing that actually, you know, it's down. this life is down to you. You've got to be accountable. You've got to take responsibility for where you're at in your career and your life, how happy you are, whether you are stuck in something that you need to quit, like we spoke about earlier, with something's got to change. Ultimately, no one can do it for you and no one owes you anything. You know, you effectively... It's just the brutal reality of it, isn't it? You, you know, you are completely responsible for your own your own life and your own happiness. This is a really inspirational piece, though. It's only about three and a half minutes long, but um, this is the sort of material that Lewis, you know, creates every single week from the School of Greatness. You are allowed to have a dream and a hope for your life, even if it doesn't make sense to anybody else. You're allowed to want something. You're allowed to pursue something because it makes your heart come alive. And it doesn't matter if your mom understands it or your boyfriend or your wife or your kids. It doesn't matter that it makes sense to anybody else. It, it only matters that it makes you come alive. Sometimes having an anti-hero is just as powerful as having a hero. I 
think a lot of what propelled me was growing up and thinking, I don't want to be like this. I don't want this life. Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't want these things. I right. definitely don't want to be with that kind right. of person. And that propelled me. Don't let someone in the cheap seats have an expensive opinion in your life. Don't let someone who's not in the ring get to decide who you are and what you get to be. Because those other people are not the ones who are gonna have to live with regret for the rest of their lives. How do you continue to show up for people and not be overwhelmed by people? When I feel overwhelmed, my gut is like, go hide away. Don't listen to that instinct. You're okay, you're safe, you're on solid ground. Don't be freaked out, just stay here, stay with it, keep doing the work. Whether it was running a marathon or building a business or getting a book deal, you are in control. You are in control of what happens next. You choose a good life, you choose a bad life, you choose your perception, you are in control of this. And if you are unhappy, that's on you. It was all the same roadmap, so maybe you're the same way. Maybe this is not like new, but this is how I did it was, I would start with a goal and I would work backwards and would break it down into manageable bite-sized pieces. And every single time I got to a new spot in the map and I didn't know how to achieve something, I did the same three things to try and get me uncluttered and then I'd move forward and I kept moving forward. I called my shot, I didn't make it, but dang it, I'm gonna stand back up tomorrow and I'm gonna keep going. I just really believed that I could have anything that I wanted if I was willing to work for it. And you had to keep doing the work to get to a place where we could be here. And that's the thing that I think people miss is you have to keep going. You don't even know who you're gonna be. You don't know who you're gonna be half a decade from now or 10 years from now because you, you stopped. Like, why am I successful and other people who want the same things and start at the same time aren't? Because when they heard no, they listened. I just kept going. I just kept going. Boom. So at Lewis Howes, um, to follow Lewis and the School of Greatness, look the School of Greatness up on, uh, you can watch the videos on YouTube or you can listen to the audio on Spotify or iTunes um, or anywhere else you get your podcast from. I freaking love the uh, quote from Rachel there. So don't let someone in the cheap seats have an expensive opinion in your life. How many people right now are like, holy shit, that's exactly what I'm I'm allowing to happen. I bet some people who are watching this or if you listen on the replay, that's probably really resonated with you. Um, so uh, they are just three people. Yeah, let's like say someone who tweeted me this morning, I can't remember who it was exactly, was like, listen, can we do, can, you know, can you do a session where you share, you know, some of the people that you listen to? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Um, Steve Bartlett, Stephen Bartlett, Gary V, Lewis Howes. Um, I'll I'll do another session, you know, where we, we do another, uh, you know, we do another three. I mean, there's literally, God, there's dozens. They were just, there's three that I initially turned to many years ago. I think sometimes when you get lost in your life a little bit, you just, you know, you, you search online for some something to make sense and some help. And then you come across a few people and they're just the people who are like your ride and dies. So you're like, right, these <laughs> out of everyone, these are my go-to people. Um, and they were just, yeah, like Lewis particularly was was, was probably the first person that I, uh, I found online and reached out to him. Um, we had a great conversation. I met Lewis just once before met Gary B in London just the once, um, but we had a great chat. He gave me some great advice that really has helped me grow out on this.tv into what it is today. Um, and Steve Bartlett, I've met uh, two or three times. Um, really, really great guy. And um, all, all of them just achieve really great things and are so generous with the, oh, she's made the information that they, uh, they put out into the world. So give them a follow. Um, I hope, you know, let me know if they were like new to you as well. How many people here like already knew of these, uh, of these people? Um, before tonight because um, I'd like to know yeah that'd just be uh, be quite interesting uh, we've got a few minutes left going to talk about what I'm putting out so I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to be putting out some fantastic stuff this week as well tomorrow night for members of actonthis.tv we've got two incredible guests on our member only mastermind session taking place on zoom at 7 30 p.m tomorrow night if you're not a member of actonthis.tv get yourself over to the site now get yourself a membership you will absolutely not regret this. You are hurting your career if you are not part of this community. Let me show you uh, what we've got going on tomorrow night. I'm going to play a trailer out, but I'm also going to... Oh, hang on. Hang on. Where's my browser? That was not my web browser. I don't know what that was. That was some sort of like weird weird menu that just came up on the screen. Um, 
Come on, Ross, sort this out. That's Twitter. Um, so here's the, here's the schedule for, if I click on this, here's the schedule for the next couple of weeks. We've got some cracking guests coming up. In 21 hours and 32 minutes, those listening on the replay, you might have even less than that. Um, tomorrow night, we've got Alexandra Maxwell and Simon Naylor from 53.2. You might have heard 53.2. It's an incredible um, sort of acting space, theatre space, um, uh, venue for networking, workshops, putting on events. It's just like an incredible platform for actors to get their work seen. Uh, they've just opened up a brand new venue in Manchester. Don't worry if you're outside of Manchester, though. They now allow you to stream your events. Say, for instance, you're in London and you've, you've shot a short film over lockdown and you're like, right, I want to put this out, not just to my London people, but I want to put this out, you know, show this film, screen this film in Manchester. 53.2 will allow you to stream your film from London to their big screen in Manchester, in their studio. You know, they'll sell tickets for you, whatever, you know, get access down. Even if you don't want to be there, you can still stream it into the studio from wherever you are. And you're like, right, I want to, you know, I want an audience up north. And um, they're just doing incredible, incredible stuff. And uh, we're going to be talking all about the new venue. Also, the mindset. These are just, these are actors. Alex and Simon are actors. The mindset that went into taking over, ultimately, a massive derelict site in Manchester and building it into this beautiful theatre. You might have seen shots of 53.2. Um, online just follow at 53 um, you know on Twitter and you'll see sort of the new bar um, they've got the studio space open at the moment they're going to open by the end of the year hopefully a 150 seat theatre within the venue as well a big screen it's completely accessible the venue is like everyone knows BSL um, you know, it's like completely accessible physically for people who are wheelchair users. Um, like it's just, you know, if you're neurodiverse, I mean, they, they look after every single aspect to make theatre, you know, accessible for everybody, regardless of, you know, the, the, the situation that you are in. Um, and we're going to be giving away an incredible prize tomorrow night on the floor in 53.2. They have these floor plates that are handmade and are put into the floor of the venue like forever. Um, it was a way for them to raise some money. They were £175 to buy, and you could put an inscription on it of your name and a message from you or whatever or from your company or something like that. Um, we're going to be giving one of those away tomorrow evening on this broadcast. So if you're a member of actsonlist.tv and you attend this live, this will only be for people who are there live. You will get an opportunity to win one of these floor plates, have whatever you want, you know, um, uh, engraved in it and then it will go into the floor of 53.2 and um, so you'll be part of that venue well at least for the next 15 years the the least they've got on the place is for the, at least the next 15 years so if not for much much longer and um, so that's tomorrow night 7 30 p.m i'll play the trailer for that out in a second the week after we have got wendy scazzaro from felix the wolf an incredible london agent um they've got some wicked you know clients on their books working in top tv theater and film wendy's going to be coming on talking all about the agency and ultimately signing with a top you know a top london agent um more of a kind of a boutique agency more personal kind of management um they're one of the most established in the industry though they're the, the longest established independent agency um in the uk they started in 1947 so they've got a lot of experience um because people have been asking me to bring on more agents the week after we've got mildred yan from united agents um you know we're going big if you want to know about how you sign we're literally the biggest of agents uh, we're gonna be talking about that with mildred she's really hot on um positive psychology and mindset as well and discovering your superpower as an actor that's the following week and then we've got this guy on the following week who people have been asking for and i'm like right we've got to get johnny weldon on he's very famous on twitter right now for his actor parody sketches that have literally racked up millions and millions of views. Um, so Johnny's going to be coming and talking all about social media, viral video, um, and ultimately what, you know, putting these things out on Twitter and social media on Instagram as well have led to, you know, opportunities for him within his acting career, networking opportunities, meeting casting directors, agents, getting representation through putting his own material out there um, will no doubt be an incredible session. So that's the next four sessions. I won't spoil what's coming up um, later on in July, but if you want to be involved in this, you're going to get literally four of these sessions a month, two um, Q&A sessions with me a month, a networking event on the first Saturday of every month. That's seven two-hour sessions basically every single month for 24 quid. It costs you less than what most people out there are charging you right now for one session. You're going to get seven right? Just try to make it an absolute no freaking brainer. Um, if you want to get a membership, that's on this.tv forward slash live. It's on the bottom of the screen right now. Um, go and do that before 7.30 p.m. tonight and hopefully I will literally see you on Zoom um, tomorrow evening. 
Um, Tom says, I'm coming to Manchester when I take you lot to bat out of hell. Are you going to pay for us tickets, Tom, to go to the theatre? I'm well up for that, mate. Thanks uh, thanks for that. Appreciate uh, appreciate that. Um, and have an act on this member night out, definitely. Tom says we need a 53-2 in London. I wouldn't be surprised, you know, Tom, if it happens at some point. But it is, I say, it's a, it's a venue that... It might be in Manchester, but it's absolutely accessible to people from outside the area, um, you know, through technology, ultimately, you know. So if you wanted to screen something, and, you know, you're in London and you want to screen it in Manchester, um, you know, get your work seen elsewhere, then um, it's absolutely uh, possible. I really hope you can link up Johnny Weldon with Mark Joseph because they both put out amazing content. Yeah, we need like a, a, uh, a hookup. We need Johnny Weldon, Mark and Lawrence to do a little... Um, uh, I don't know, sort of like a, a trio of uh, comedy, comedy genius um, on Twitter. I'm sure we can make we can we can maybe make it happen, um, Chris. Uh, right, I'm going to play to finish tonight. I'm going to play a trailer for tomorrow night. We just hear a little bit about um, what's going on tomorrow night with um, Simon and Alex. Um, I want to see you there. Basically, I hope tonight has been useful to you. I hope you're now going to go and follow Steve and Gary. Um, and uh, Lewis as well, and um, let them know that I uh, I sent you if you uh, if you did. But they're really really cool guys, um, and I think we can all learn you know all learn a lot from them. Um, so this is fifty three two. This is Alex and Simon. Be there seven thirty pm tomorrow night. If I can do anything for you in the meantime, drop me a tweet at Act on This TV, and I will see you there. Until then, lots of love to everybody. Bye for now. Actors, we are back again with an invite for you all to this week's Act On This TV live mastermind session. It's taking place on Zoom on Tuesday, the 15th of June at 7.30 p.m. with not one, but two incredible guests, co-founders of 532, one of the most exciting acting platforms slash newest venues in the UK. It's Alexander Maxwell and Simon Naylor. Guys, lots of exciting stuff to share with actors on Tuesday night. What are we going to be covering? Well, mainly that we're back. Yes. Yay. Um, yes, we are back. We are open. We have um, two arches, um, our bar arch and soon to be our theatre arch. Um, our bar arch is very much open. You've probably seen it online. It's just yeah. looking beautiful. Um, so please come on down and come and see people you might not have seen for a while. Have a coffee, have a wine, come and say hello. Um, COVID safely, obviously, at the moment. Um, but yes, and soon our theatre will be open. More to Simon. Simon? <laughs> A seamless link. Yeah, the big house isn't open yet. Obviously, you know, we're aiming to 150 seater. But in the meantime, we have opened a studio space, which is really versatile and ready for anything. We've got shows booked in there already. We've got lots of uh, short plays, new plays, writing festivals coming up. And of course, the screen is up in there. So we're going to be streaming some stuff. So if you've been working on anything, writing anything, filming anything over lockdown, now is the time to get it out, get it aired and see what people think of it. So if you want to get involved, drop us a line, get to the website 532.com and see if we can help you out i love it and this yeah i mean even people outside of manchester if you've got a film that you shot and you want to stream it into manchester and have an audience this is available yeah. too at, um, at 53 too if you want to get involved in this chat it's going to be incredible get yourself over right now to act on this.tv forward slash live for full detail uh, details even we do this every single week with a top industry guest and folks little bit of pressure ask everybody this why don't actors want to miss this session in particular Oh, well, it's a good one. We have, as you know, hopefully been putting floor plates in the floor of 532 with your personal inscriptions on. And we are going to be giving away one of those floor plates in the show. I love it. It's literally an opportunity for you to be part of the 532 fabric for life. If you want to be there, you want that. Act on this.tv forward slash live.